right, so we are here. Another episode of the Brown Ballers Podcast. We got a very special guest here. Rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, so much more. But also, one of the freshest brown beards I've seen <laughs> in a long time. Happy. What's going on? What's good, brother? Nice to meet you, man. Thank you for welcoming, welcoming us to this crazy, this crazy house, this dope setup. How's the LA life been treating you? Man, it's a, it's a blessing to be out here, bro. Yep. So, you know, the lifestyle got to match with you, how you live. So, we in the hills, man. Yeah, I love it, man. Uh, obviously... We're in LA. We're having a good time. Born and raised in LA. How's that been for you? Because you're you're living the, you're living the Cali boy life. How how's it been? <laughs> Cali boy life. No, that's for <laughs> real, bro. Um, it's honestly it's home to me. It's norm. It's like it's normal. It's natural yeah. to me. So actually, when I go visit other states and countries, I see like the difference. You know what I mean? And out here, like we really are the capital of like entertainment, and like everyone out here is like living in Hollywood. We are chasing dreams out here where we'll, we're able to as well just because of the network, the connections, and the beautiful weather. Absolutely. Um, let's kick it off with something fun. So I was kind of scrubbing through, obviously, like, just checking your socials. I was like, yo, I wonder if Happy has a TikTok, man. <laughs> so <laughs> I went deep into the archives. I found the TikTok, and there was one video that stuck out to me, bro. It was you making roti. Oh, I, man. Yo, I need to know because it, it had a lot of views. It was almost viral. Yeah, yeah. How'd that come about? You know what? Um, I was I started thinking, I was like, you know, I love to cook. You know what I mean? So living out here, like I just like I was like, yo, man, like I gotta tell I gotta show people how I do it. You know what I mean? So um I had no help from nobody. I did I did it all on my own, man. I, my mom just helped me set up. That was it. <laughs> and I did my thing, man. I've been watching her do it my whole life. So I went and did it and I was like, I just want people to see like, you know, my side of how I eat yep. and my background and stuff like that. So what can in the kitchen, what can you throw down? Like what if I if I'm pulling up tomorrow for dinner, what you about to throw down in the kitchen? Eh, man, <laughs> tacos is my thing. Okay, okay. But I don't do just like tacos, you know what I mean? Like I'll do shrimp tandoori tacos, you know what I mean? Like okay. with guacamole and all fresh made homemade guacamole, okay. sauteed onions, mushrooms, bell peppers. It's 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 crazy. So you really be a chef in there. I mean, that's just the basic, you know what I mean? We can get down to like gourmet burgers, hot dogs. Okay. We can do like, I do uh, shrimp Alfredo, uh, homemade sauce, white sauce, Alfredo, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I'll get down. Yes, bro. <laughs> so hopefully we're having a dinner party soon. That's Absolutely. What, that's <laughs> what, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you know, uh, this is a new thing we're starting, right? The Brown Ballers Podcast is a whole brand we're building, essentially the home for brown athletes. Okay. But being an athlete, the culture of an athlete is art, fashion, music, food, movies. It's, it's so much more than just being an athlete, right? Yeah. Music is obviously a big part of your life and your career, but to you, what what defines like a brown baller? I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but to you, like, what do you think a brown baller is? Brown baller is, um, you know what, just uh, someone who can actually be okay and happy with who they are and then being the best at it. Yes. You know what I mean? I feel like we we lose ourselves trying to be somebody else and it's like you have everything you need and want it's yeah. already in you it's not in the world so stop looking in the world start looking inside and that's what a brown baller is man <laughs> that was hard that was deep bro <laughs> yeah yeah i like that i respect that too though of course that's like that's that's like half the battle right there right trying to look inside yourself and find out who you truly are yeah um and i know that's probably something big that you experience throughout your life yeah let's kind of go through your journey a little bit so we can let the big big Part about doing this podcast, right? Like I told you before, is like I want to. Sh- we want to shed light on brown ballers, yeah. right? We want the next generation to understand there's so much more that you can do. Obviously, you can still be a doctor, scientist. We can do anything you want in life, yeah. but our stories of being comedians, being singers, rappers, producers, like so much, like it's not shown. And your story is like one of those amazing ones. Where it's like, man, why is this not being talked about more? Because it's in the I guess South Asian community. Could be frowned upon you know but when i saw your story in that video i texted you that day i was like damn man this is like powerful yeah how has it been for you like navigating this life you know in the music industry man it's uh i didn't even know the journey was going to be like this i just felt like i had issues and i didn't know how to deal with them right so i went ahead and just like you know i thought alcohol is okay because it's accepted in our community so i just went hard on it and then just being in LA, I wasn't just, you know, around Indians. I was around all types of cultures. So I was introduced to all types of drugs, you know. So it was just, you know, my, like where I was located, unfortunately, you know. I mean, um, 
and it just took a toll in my body. Just I just can you know could control it. It controlled me, and um, you know I just just having times of over and over of feeling feeling like a failure, and just you know quitting so many times on so many things, and just um, letting my myself down, my family down. You know what I mean? Like I was just lost and confused, and it was just like a it was a hard hard time for me. Just just I mean, just addiction itself. You know what I mean? Trying to find, just being an artist and being a <laughs> being a producer was a whole different game. I mean, right. I had to overcome my demons before I even wanted to chase my dream. I think, I think when we first saw it, liquor started for you early, like fourteen yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Is that just from the influence? No, that was actually from uh, family friends. My uh -huh. uncle, yeah, uncle. Well, he's no, he's not like my family. You know, we yeah. call everybody auntie of and uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, he. I was like, yo, you're my dad's friend. You wouldn't do anything, you know, wrong. You wouldn't give me anything I'm not supposed you have to full have. Trust. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was just the beginning of of a of a of a long journey that was coming ahead of my life. But regardless if it was him or somebody else, it was still gonna be a part of my life. Right. I feel like part of my story. From Laker, it just kind of built up into other drugs, ecstasy, and those yeah. things. Like how did how did it happen, bro? Like is <laughs> like I said, is it all just a build up? Yeah, it was definitely a build up. I feel like I I feel like when I drank, I was like, man, I finally don't have to care what people think about me. I could be whoever uh, I want. Yeah. I could fly if I want. And then it was just like, that was in me, but the liquor let it out. You know what I mean? It was already in me. So yeah. I just need an excuse to say it because then if it didn't sound right, I could blame the alcohol, right? Right. So I felt like I, I just needed a way to express myself, but I felt like, who am I to feel great? What am, why, am I, why do I feel great? You know, why do I feel like I, I could do anything in this life? But for some reason, I would look around and, I believed what people said about me. You know, you were not this, you ain't that. Yeah. You ain't going to do it. You can't, you know what I mean? So I'm like, well, you're older than me. You're smarter than me. You're wiser than me. You must be right. I probably am nothing. Right. But then I was like, why do I feel like I'm supposed to be great? Why do I feel like I'm supposed to do something amazing? And I was so confused because I'm listening to educated, smart people that went to college, that went to university. And I'm taught in our culture a doctor is everything. A lawyer is everything. So I'm yep. listening to these people and they're like, I couldn't do it. You can't do it. Just go to school. And I went to school and it wasn't for me. So I was just like, man, like, what is going on? So the, the drinking wasn't enough. It was like, what else can I do? You know what I mean? And my best friends that were in high school with me, top A students, like trustworthy, everything. They're the ones who introduced me to drugs. And it was like, the funny thing is, my parents went to my school, right? It's a funny story, but it's real, because I'm going to be real, right? I don't know if I could cuss, but my oh, bad if I do. <laughs> um, my parents went to my school. They, they went to my teachers when I was in middle school. They said, who are the smartest kids in school? And, and the teacher chose. And she said, you can be friends with only them. And I was like, okay, so these are going to be my friends for sure. Like, yo, you're the homies now. And wow. next thing you know, they're the ones who actually introduced me to drugs, to cocaine, to ecstasy in and, high school and yeah in high school for middle school it's like we're gonna be friends and then in high school it's like they were like you know testing and trying new things and they're like yo try this and i was like well you are chosen for me so you know we're gonna do this thing together because you're you're my friend and you you know what i mean i was really naive i was really like young kid man you know what i mean yeah. like i didn't i didn't care i was like because I had so many restrictions in my life. So I was like, the only freedom I got, I took it. I ran with it. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, you're my friend. You want to do this? Let's do it. You know? Because tomorrow, if some shit happens, at least I could blame my parents. Because they're the ones who chose. <laughs> yes, I had the whole Yo, thing. That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, kids are smart, bro. Like, they're oh, smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so whatever, like, whatever I could get away with, I tried. Your parents went to the school, picked out the top kids in class. Yeah. And that was something that added to kind of like spinning you out. That's nuts. Yeah. Um, dang, that's crazy. That's why I say like when people want to know like when they're going through something, I'm like, the, like it's crazy because I had to go through this. Right. Like I had to. And I fought, I fought it so bad. I was like, but then now I see it. I'm like, man, I'm on the other side. Like I'm, I'm past my hard time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get to look back and I'm like, damn, I can't believe I, I made it through that. Like I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. I was supposed to die, but I guess I wasn't. You know what I mean? I'm supposed to be here. You're and supposed sharing to be this, here right you know now. Know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I did try to end it. You know what I mean? Like the the devil was there, bro. Like I, 
I mean, you have you give a substance control of your mind. You are not you anymore. Right. So whatever was, however I was thinking, I was depressed because I normally I'm not a depressed person. I'm a happy person. But these drugs made me lose who I was naturally supposed to be because I was told lies and I believed them. So that's why I'm, you know, what it gets so like crazy, bro. Like, and it's like that's why I'm like, I had to like fight my family because I was like. Yo, like I'm not supposed to go to school. I dropped out of high school. I convinced my mom to sign my papers to, cause I was like, I'm gonna go to homeschool. And then I didn't go to homeschool. So I dropped out in like 10, it was like, I have like halfway up 10th grade. And she always blamed herself, but now she's like, damn, like look at what you're doing in life. I said, I know you right. fought what it was supposed to be my story so bad my whole family did because everybody got went to school everybody got their degrees yeah, you were the I only did. one on the other side yeah but it was something in my heart i didn't know how to explain it you know and now everyone sees like damn like you did put us all through something but i said it's not for me it's for a bigger cause i don't know what it is yeah but it's not just for me to be a musician a rapper and have a lambo and girls and it's not that at all like that's what that was like what drew me towards it but as things started moving i said oh this is bigger than me and this story is bigger than me and I'm supposed to share as much as I can yep. to impact as much as I can. Because as I travel the world, I see drugs and alcohol land in India now, UK. Like, I see people doing balloons while they're driving. I'm like, what is this? Like, what is going on? So it's like, I got to share my story to save as many people as I can. Dude, it's so powerful, man. <laughs> like, hearing you speak about it. Obviously, to, to get through all this stuff, I would assume a big part of it is the support system. Yeah. The family. Like, as you're going through all this and, like, you know, you, you talked about like suicide and, and potentially like end your life. It's like the demons are taking over. Like, how do you navigate that? Who are you falling back on to get you through those tough times? Um, you know, it's funny this whole time in my life, um, I didn't know God existed. I always questioned him. You know what I mean? I feel like I was like, my family's very godly. And I was just like, you know, and I'm my uncles and aunties, but I see the way they live and I'm like, it don't match. Like, if you're godly, like, why do you cuss? Why do you judge? Why do you gossip? Why do you hate? Why do you compare? Like, and I was like, I don't want to be godly. That's not, that don't feel right. And I feel like it's not their fault because they were, they were told lies because their parents were told lies and their parents are told lies. It's like, it's like the blind leading the blind, the broken showing the broken how to live. And it's like, it's not their fault. Yep. So I was just like, man, like, I had to go through a dark time. You know what I mean? I had to had a time where it was, it was, it sucked because it was so lonely. I lost everyone in my life. I lost my job. I lost everything. But it was the biggest blessing in my life because I got to, I got to ask myself who I was and who I wanted to be. I didn't have people in my ear anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I had to shed all that old skin. So all my connections I made through drugs and alcohol were always going to be there unless I just Bur Adam. burnt the br I had to burn every I burn lit the bridge. whole fucking bridge yeah, yeah, around yeah, the me whole city burned there's down. so many bridges connected to me I burned yeah. everything everyone's like you're toxic I was like I know I am but when I did that it became a blessing because I had a I woke up to me and I said well what do you want to do now like you don't got nobody in your life what do you want to eat what do you want to how do you want to live you know what I mean yeah I was blessed to have a roof over my head at the time being so I got to really be like you know I felt like you know I, I did, dude. I fell, on, I fell on my knees and I said, you know, God, if you're real, this is the time to come. This is the time because I've been with the devil. I've been with trappers. I was with drug dealers. And they would be like, yo, the way you fucking around with the drugs, like we got people dying. Like he's like, a couple of my clients already died and you just got to calm down. Like drug dealers were telling me that. And I was like, and I was like, I had no friends. I would jump in the car with him. Like, where are we going? He's like, we going to go drop some loads off. I'm like, you're my only homie right now. So I'm going to roll with you, you know? You was really in it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, but even like, I don't know. I feel like I had something to prove yeah. to myself. You know what I mean? So I do. I fall back on God every time, man. That's that's the real, that's the truth, that's, bro. That's and huge, yeah. People think it's family. No, you fall to God and God will bring you everything you need, including keeping yourself steady. You know what I mean? Because people start praying to these rocks and these pictures and these things. And it's like, these materialistic things that get you lost, bro. And it, it got me lost. It made me hate myself. So just every time I feel like I'm losing myself, I just look back to him. And I'm like, yo, control, help me out. And he comes through every time. He comes and saves you. Yeah. Your, your, your full normal name is Harpreet Singh. Yeah. I think I have a theory on the happy stage name. <laughs> yeah. But like, how did the happy name actually come about? Is it 
because of the past and like trying to shed that skin and starting something new or is it something completely different? Um, I tried doing different names, you know, like artist names. Yeah. Major moves. Like um audio I'm an alcoholic, so I'm like, I'm gonna call myself an audioholic. <laughs> so like I, I I was a kid, you know, I was like different names and and people like, who is this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I was like, it's me. Like, so I was like, wait. If I'm trying to do this, I should just go by what people know me as. Obviously, my parents gave me that nickname since I was born. So after trying to find a name this whole time, I said, I'm just going to go by Happy Sing. Yeah. As simple as that. And now I say, well, when I play my stuff, people are like, is that happy? That's happy. Yeah, that's you happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually a vibe. Um, we just talked about so many things that I don't know if I could bring on another guest to talk about this brown skin, just to be straight up with you. Yeah. Um, all this stuff we just chatted about is heavily frowned upon within our parents, our circles, our communities, and the entire culture. Yeah. But obviously for you, it's a very important, like you said, to share your story, shed light on this. And your story is right in itself. It hasn't even like really begun technically. Yeah. You know, you shed that and now you're here trying to build yourself and better yourself. Yeah. What's the most important takeaway? If there is one, maybe there's multiple that came from this. I, I'm going to call it your past life. Yeah. That you can maybe shed and share with us. Your life goes what you ask for, right? So I asked for something and for that to happen, I had a, there had to be change in my life because if I stayed the way I was, my life was going to go the way I was going to go. Yes. But since I asked for something, I said, I want to be great. I want to be a musician. I want to do music. I want to be an artist. You know, my whole life, people call it the universe. People call it God. As long as you know it's not you, you ask for something, your whole world is going to start changing. And I found out, don't fight when the world starts changing. Don't, fight, don't try to hold on to that person or that friend and, and, and just let it go. Yep. And because sometimes when your hands are full, you can't get new blessings. You know what I mean? So you just got to let go and then let the things that are supposed to fall into your life. Facts. That's huge. Yeah. Um, something I just, it's crazy because I like, was just talking to like the wife about this. Yeah. Something as, as men, we don't, we don't talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. This is like, just any conversation, honestly, in general and deep, just in general circles, like you don't get to have deep conversations with other guys. Cause like we normally sheltered off. We had our emotions, our feelings, but it's like almost like the flip side, like just having this conversation. It's like almost like enlightening to me. Cause it's like, damn, there is people who want to open up and are comfortable with themselves yeah. to share this story and tell it. And that's so important. Yeah. To any brown skin individual, kid, anyone in the, in the world is going to watch this. Mm -hmm. What's like that one piece of advice to them if they're struggling with mental health? Because mental health is like a big thing. Yeah. What's one, what, what's one thing you could tell them that could maybe help them get out of that funk or just push forward and you know, focus on a, on a brighter tomorrow? Just know that everything, everything, because even till today, I will get in my head and I will start saying things to myself. That I know it's not me, but it's like, it don't look like you're going to make it. It don't look like you're going to, after doing everything I'm doing, after having the songs with the people that I have now, sure I'm right. like, you ain't going to make it, bro. Like, why? And I was like, as long as that does not come out of my mouth, I can think whatever I want. Yep. As long as it don't come out of my, the second it comes out of my mouth, again, you just ask for something. God, <laughs> universe does not know what you are asking for, if it's good or bad. It just knows that you're asking. So whatever comes out of your mouth, bro, it's so important. It's so, because I tried everything. I tried drugs. I tried buying shit, like buying futures, buying the, the fame. I tried, you know, whatever. I tried signing my life and I put it on a paper. I'm like, devil, where you at? I tried everything. And then I tried one thing that I never tried was just being positive with myself. You spend the most time with yourself. Nobody else does. So what are you telling yourself? Yep. You know what I mean? So it's very important what you tell yourself. Whether you're having good days and bad days, everything is temporary. Everything. That's it right The there. age, the time, the life, everything. Yeah. So you're feeling some type of way. Guess what? Tomorrow is going to be a different day. And just, just know it's going to be, it's going to change. Like, it's going to change and everything's going to be okay. Because it's temporary. That was deep. Yo, the bars you're dropping on this are like, are so key and important. Because yeah, yeah. again, people just don't talk about this kind of stuff, man. Like, we just talked about like the music side a little bit. Yeah. What got you into this? And when did that actually like officially happen? 
I was introduced to music when I was like, well, I mean, my whole life I've been listening to Power 106. Okay. And, you know, just hearing hearing beats on on the radio when it's like, you know, it's a it's a black radio station and I hear I hear a double up in the back of a Tim- Timbaland beat. And I'm like, that sounds like a double up. So I started gravitating towards it more. I was like, it was like almost calling me. Then I hear Jay-Z and <laughs> Mundiato Butchkin and he yeah. remixed and I'm like, okay, like I'm not tripping. Like this is playing on the radio right now. Like me and my dad are just on the same radio station, like bumping it. He actually put the radio up. Usually he puts it down. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, like, and I was like, how do I, how do I do that? You know what I mean? And I was introduced to uh, my friend that my parents chose. His brother had a studio in his house. So every time I went over, I'm like, that's sick. What is that? It looks cool to me. It looks, it attracted me towards it. And I went home and I just downloaded, I went on Google and I was like, download software for music, beats, production, whatever. And FL Studio popped up and I was 14 years old, 13. And I just started to play around with it, man. Yeah. (laughs) So I started off as a producer at age 13. Yeah, you started, you start off writing and producing, right? Just producing first. Just producing first. Just producing first. I'll go to my school and then I'll just show people beats. I'm like, what? Like, that's crazy, you know? And the people are like, yo, my cousin raps. Like, you want, you don't, and then like this cholo would come over and I'm like, oh shit, this is like really happening right now. You know what I mean? So I, then I, then I realized I'm like, yo, I need a mic. I need a, I need a whole setup. Like yeah. I got to, I started to record people and then I'll start helping them write. Next thing you know, I'm coming up with hooks and verses and I'm like, yo, my shit sounds way better. And then it was like this whole, it's funny cause I actually got a mic tatted on me, but I was a producer when I got the mic tatted on me. And I was like, later on, I was like, I fucked up. I was supposed to get a piano. Like, I'm a producer. Like, people would have pianos and, like, notes that they played. And yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I messed up. And at, when I was 25 years old, I became a, an artist. And I was like, damn, I knew I was going to be an artist before I knew I was going to be an artist. Like, deep down, we know what we want. We just stop ourselves. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, at 25, right before I became an artist, like, physically told myself, I'm an artist. I was writing for people. And then I started getting no love no, um, like no credits, you know, we're getting to bigger and bigger people, bigger. I started working with labels and stuff, working with their artists. And I'm like, why? Like you guys aren't even showing me love. I was getting no respect. I felt like, I felt like I was, um, it was like a, my first day at Subway again, you know, it's like just being at the bottom and the managers running yeah, everything. Just like a normal person. Yeah. No respect. And I was like, you know what? I want to be respected. Why is he being respected? Cause he's on the mic and I'm not when I'm doing all the work. So that's when I was like, yo, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give this a, ch- a chance. And I said, I told my mom, I said, yo, I'm going to do this music thing one more time. It's, it's like a week after I, I sobered up. I didn't know if I was going to relapse because I always relapsed. But I said, I'm going to try this. She's like, you know what happens every time you do music. You end up with a bottle. You end up at the strip club. You end up like in a jail. You end up in doing some stupid shit. And I was like, no, I'm really going to try this with God this time. Like, I'm going to do it the right way, the good way, whatever that might be. You know what I mean? Every day is like, I try my best to be the best person I can be. So next thing you know, two, three months later, I ended up opening, I made a song and I hit up my homie. I'm like, yo, he's a DJ. I hit him up. I'm like, yo, like, cause what's next, right? You, you want to, you got to figure out what you want in life. So yeah. I want to be an artist. I got to get, I got to get a hit song. I made a hit song. I'm like, now what do I do? I got to go perform it. So I hit up my DJ homie. He's like, yo, you jump on my tracks. Like when I'm DJing, just come out and then I'll play your song. Perform. Perform it. So I did that. And then I ended up, and the funny thing is we ended up opening up for Tyga. Yeah. So Tyga, Jeremiah, Yo Gotti was Khalifa. Easy. And it was like, I'm a new artist, bro. Like, I didn't know where to hold the mic. <laughs> I didn't know if like, I'm supposed to run, walk, but I'm opening up for these sold out club venues and shit. And the funny thing is this, the, 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 the year that I decided to be an artist is the year everything fell in, um, in place. So it's like, I, the, for 12 years, I was a producer and nothing really happened. And the day I decided to be an artist, months later, it just started clicking for you. And everything coming together. just fell in place so quick. Was- and a, and a, and a big reason you pushed to becoming a solo artist was like you said, was not getting like that recognition, being being that writer, being that producer, that that BTS guy, basically. Yeah. So that pushed you to kind of step out. And you said yeah. the first year you started doing, and that first year that's when you had yeah. Tiger Jeremiah and you opened up for six them? months, three to six months in. Yeah. How'd you get that? Just through the the homies, through, the DJs, through DJs, promoters. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy, bro. What? No, correct me if I'm wrong. Was the first solo track Nukka? Yeah. Is that what you performed? No, that was. Um, I had music before that. 
and then I had okay. music before that. Okay, so and I had music before. That. You, got like, you got like old hits coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was my first introduction to the world as an Indian American artist. Yeah. So like you know, after doing this, I met my team, and they're like, "Yo, like you want to venture off going to India, like Bollywood, you know, uh, Punjabi market." And I was like, "Yeah, like you know, I speak the language. Um, I'm not I'm not Sidhu. I'm not." these dudes like yeah. i don't understand them i'm very basic punjabi you know and like it, it works just come and do it and then next thing you know we did nakra and it just hit a million streams my first song that hit a million over a million streams and it Crazy. was like so today people are like yo that's that grocery store song like everyone no. loves it you know what i mean <laughs> i was literally just gonna say like how did that one of my favorite that's my favorite music video because of the grocery store for <laughs> obvious reasons it's like everyone else like How'd that come about? Is that your idea? The no, shoot that man. We, we shot the video before and it came out horrible. And we're like, yo, we got to do this again with a new director, new concept. Yeah. So my boy Ruggu pulled up and he's like, yo, I got this idea. Like, we'll have him at the grocery store. We'll have him in a car. Like, he's working. Because he's like, because I used to work for my dad at, at our restaurants and stuff. So okay. he's like, let's kind of make a storyline where it was like his life. Where he's like, because every time my dad was close the store, I mean, he knows. So it's, it's all good. I would throw parties at the store. No way. So he would real? close it and then I would reopen it and then I'll call the girls and I'll call everybody. I'm like, yo, pull up. Like, like I'll do slip and slide on the floor of the restaurant. We'll like put a hose and like we do some crazy. Like you'd be like, why? No you know what I mean? Like, but I was just like, I party, bro. So they're like, why don't we put that in your first video? Like you entering into this game and people okay. saying what you did. So that uncle leaving was technically like my dad leaving. And I was like, and I threw the party. <laughs> so, so growing up back home, there used to be a homie, and everybody knew him as like that guy. Yeah, and he was that guy that would just throw the fire ass party. Yeah, I'm assuming you would be like that homie. That bro. was pretty much me. You'd I was be because like, I heard slip and slide. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it was crazy. Wild. It was wild, bro. It was like and crazy. in a grocery store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. That's crazy. Um, uh, musical influences. Your music to me has a couple different genres such as vibes mixed in yeah but to you like what what is what is your music described as like how would you describe it honestly it's once you hear it you should just feel some type of way you know what i mean um sometimes i get in my thoughts so i try to write deep stuff but me i'm just a happy person i love growing up listening to chris brown lil wayne Throwback, yeah. drake like just when they when the when when the music went on like Timbaland stuff Jay Z like man like yep. it just made me feel some type of way and I was like why do I feel dope you know what I mean like just listen to that music that's when you wanted to put it up while you're driving with, in the car you know so um, just listen to them honestly and Swiss Beats definitely Scott Storch absolutely you yeah know what I mean I studied oh, them you know like I was like why does he sound so much like like our music because they were using it and like Scott Seriously? Storch actually like Sampling. studied yeah the Indian like instruments and stuff and. It's so crazy of like how much recognition our country is getting without actually getting the actual credit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like no one's really doing that. That's why we're here now today because it's time that, you know, we, we start getting that recognition that we deserve. Absolutely, bro. So obviously with the music, there's, there's like the Desi side. There's the Punjabi like hip hop rap side. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I hear Latin yeah. inspiration. Is, that's true, right? Absolutely. How, how'd that, like where'd that come from? Like what inspired that side of it? I mean, we live in Los Angeles, bro. Like before, <laughs> That's a fact. before, before this was, you know, this was eventually one day. This was actually part of uh, yeah. Mexico. It was obviously taking over, whatever. So it's like you know, we have a lot of uh, Latino, like a big Latino community out here. That's why I make ta Indian tacos and shit. You know, like it's like <laughs> you're mixing you're the fusion. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so, um, I listen to Raw Alexander, Azuna, Bad Bunny. You know, like J Balvin. Like they play on our radio now, you know, it's like, it's not something that you can run away from. It's, Amazing. it's huge. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's just, everything kind of came together on its own. What's the, actually, let, let me ask this first. You just dropped the track with Big Bird. Yeah. Uh, how'd that come about? Is there like a little backstory on that? Man, I've been talking to him for about a year and okay. I felt like uh, he was doing his thing. I was doing my thing. And um, I was in New York earlier this year and I just I shot him a DM I was like yo bro I'm like 20 minutes away from I'm you here. bro you know what I mean I'm like on 20 minutes you like right up right up in Toronto and yeah he finally responded back and he's like yo bro I'm gonna send you some some beats do your thing so I did I went back home went to the studio did a couple of things showed the team 
And then the team actually helps me, guide me, like, yo, yep. do this, do that. And so I went ahead and made a song and I and I was just really thinking about it. I was like, you know, what's a song that I feel right now that how I feel? I feel like being in the game where I'm going, I feel like there's nobody around me that can understand me because my story is just so different, it's different. from where I, what I hear. So I was like, damn, like nobody's really my friend around me. Like nobody understands me. This was like Kony Terayad. And I, sh I showed Bert. He's like, yeah, it was fire, bro. Like, <laughs> That's it. Like, yeah, that was it, bro. Like he just, he gave me the green light. And I was like, all right, let's shoot a video. Dang. That's crazy. What, what would be the dream collab for you? It changes all the time, bro. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, I definitely, in this life, I'm going to get a song with Drake. That is the ultimate guy. I mean, like, he's he's already hit numbers no one's no one's ever have and i've actually Absolutely. been a fan of i'm a fan actual fan i'm not a fan of artists like that i feel like not that that they're competition but me personally i never want to go to anyone's show even before i was an artist or producer i don't want to sit and watch someone perform because why would i watch something that i know i can do you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's just how i am and so it's it's weird it's and then so um yeah definitely i would say drake man that'd be huge bro yeah i mean that's 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 game changing yeah um I also saw on your Instagram recently, you posted a little picture with Dr. Zeus. Yeah. Is, is this something you can share? Yeah, Is there yeah. something coming out? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We got like two, three, or four songs. Me, him, and Zora. Um, I got a new song coming out with um, Jazzy B and Dr. Zeus. Jazzy B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, okay. We just shot the video. That's why I was in Toronto. So when I shot the bird Dang. video, I shot this. It was okay. like back to back. I was there five days just shooting, and I just flew back to So LA. you're working right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Okay. So this this is a big this is a big year. A lot of tracks potentially dropping this year. Yeah. Um, you're just working, building the personal brand, building the career out. Yeah. What's as an artist on your side, what's the most important thing? This is actually something I'm curious about. When you release a new track, what are like the most important things? Is it like the music video? Is it putting out snippets before it happens? Like, I guess what's kind of like some of the marketing side of that to have a successful release? I feel like it's uh it's definitely a team thing and it just depends on who's on the feature. So everyone does it different. So if I'm doing a feature with like a Canadian artist or a UK artist or Indian artist, they have different ways of releasing. So we'll just make sure that we make a game plan. Right. It'll be like a week or two, you know, notice, letting people know. Um, or it'll be like a picture or it'll be a video because we did a lot of BTS. So he might start throwing videos out. So it just, it just depends on the artist that I'm working with. What's it like for you? Have, so obviously, like you're like a global artist, right? Yeah. Are you excited about having this uh, fan base like within India and that side of the world? Absolutely, man. I mean, What's a, I know it's a silly question to ask you because yeah, obviously yeah. you would be excited, yeah. but that's just teeing me up for this is like, what does that mean for you being able to have that influence, not only where you're born and raised, but you know, you're Indian, you know, Punjab, like all it's, that stuff. It's a, it's a, it's, you know, what's crazy, man. Like I knew I'm going to blow up in the mainstream. Like I knew, like I knew it was going to happen. But when the Indi the doors for India opened, I said, oh, like, this ain't, this is not about me making hits in the mainstream. This is me bringing Punjabi music into the mainstream. Yes. And doing it in a way that's never been done before. Yep. So I feel like it's an honor to be repping my country out here in L.A. Um, a lot of people are doing it. I mean, Nav did it. He's doing it. Jay Sean. You know, but... I feel like there's no sing in the game. You know what I mean? Like for the Spanish market, it was like they had Jennifer Lopez. You yeah, know what I mean? Up, you heard bro. Lopez, you know, oh, she's you Spanish. Knew. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like finally there's going to be just the name itself will, will be able to uphold what, what's going on. And just to be, you know, be able to work with all these artists that are stamping me in and shit. It's uh, it's a blessing because I, I grew up listening to like Jazzy B and Zeus. And to be in the studio with them, I was like the whole time I was in awe because I was like, yo, I prayed for these days. I asked for these days. And it took now years and years, but I never gave up. Yeah. You just kept pushing through, bro, until it happened for you. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with brands like Indo Warehouse in New York? No, pushing no. Pushing that like Desi Fusion culture? No. Um, I was actually just curious on your thoughts on that, but but we'll we'll fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Diljeet, another like dope artist blowing up right now. Yeah. Just did a track with Tory Lanez. Yeah. To me, like as that kid just looking back as being a kid still, right? Looking up and seeing what you guys are doing. I feel like those collabs are what really like makes that mainstream stuff happen and allows for us to keep growing yeah. as a culture and a community. Yeah. Is that, is that correct? Is that how you feel as an artist? Like as we are uplifting and doing more collabs, it's just growing the reach of what we're all trying to do. I feel like music is changing. So 
for us to finally kind of like have those collabs, it's it's much needed because yeah. you know America needs to know about India. There's too much of a big population for them to not know. We're a party country. Like we love to party. I, I mean, we have the craziest weddings. And if you got crazy weddings, you need good music. You know facts, what I mean? Facts. So I feel like at the end of the day, we need to let them know that we're coming. Like the Spanish market did their thing and we're next. And our population is too big for it to not happen. Our numbers are too big That's for it to it right not there. happen. You know what yep. I mean? Spotify just landed in India a couple of years ago. Yep. Our number is about to go off the roof. About to go crazy. You know what I mean? So they, they're interested now. They're excited. So they want to for sure make sure they get the biggest collabs and stuff. So I'm cool with Tori's dad. He called me. He's like, yo, my son just did a song with one of your Bollywood... Uh, <laughs> One of your Bollywood dudes. And I was like, yeah, man. He's actually one of the biggest artists in yeah, India. For real, yeah. yeah. It was cool. That's dope. Um, what's next for you, bro? I know you got some tracks coming out. Yeah. I, you probably can't share everything, but what can you share for what's next for Happy, Happy seeing your career and just your life? I want to be the, you know, the best I can be. Role model to the kids, to adults. Just because you're older than me doesn't mean you, you know, you're making the best decisions in your life. I'm letting people know you can be any age and you can decide to make your life better you know what i mean you don't have to be stuck or feel like you, you know that's it this is it yeah um addiction itself is its own story so just being a positive role model showing people that you know you can't get out, out of you know doing stuff like that heavy drugs you can definitely get out of it um you can get out of your head and just chase your dream you know what i mean and i feel like whatever you want to do in this life uh, you can do <laughs> it's that people we we're i feel like we're in such a a time where manifestation, that word is just thrown around, but it's it's real. Like it's manifestation is another word of prayer. If you think it, you say it, you believe it, it can happen. You know what I mean? So that mental side, like that, like manifesting your future is so underrated. I yeah, think a lot it's of real. Like what you it's, it's powerful, bro. Yeah, like man. putting that shit out in the world and like thinking you hear all the time, putting it on paper or wherever it is, like believing. Believe you that's have to have the, that full belief. I see like I was a I was, I was a kid. In elementary, middle school, there's the science, believe in yourself, believe, believe. And I was like, what does that yeah. even mean? You know what I mean? But when it's, I didn't believe in myself and I saw what happened, then I started believing in myself and I saw what happened. And I had to not believe in myself to start believing in myself. Part of the story. Mm -hmm. So you're writing your own story. You're on your own director. You're your own actor. How, you know, the craziest movies have the best endings. So the right. crazier your story is, the doper your ending is going to be. That's <laughs> bro. That's like the perfect way to end it off. I got one more question for you. Yes. Well, when are we going to see the happy... Like, when, we, when are we going to see you go on tour? When are we going to see some, maybe some concerts? I don't know if this is a thing that's, that's coming soon or in yeah. the future, but is that something that's on the roadmap? Absolutely. Okay. Global? Oh, yeah. Okay. Shoot. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be connected. We're going to be looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Um, where can everyone follow you if they don't already know? Where can they check you out? Happy Sing Music. Um, sometimes music is spelled with a C. Sometimes it's with a K. Depends if it's like Snapchat or Twitter. Everything else is with a C. Um, real basic, YouTube, had just search Happy Sing and you'll find all types of music that I have. Much love and respect to you, bro. I, I, gen, you, I know it's a good episode when I'm, <laughs> when I'm talking to you and I lose track of my questions in my mind. So I literally <laughs> have to make sure I'm reading it because I'm like so locked into what you're saying. So yeah. that's a testament to you and how well-spoken you are. And also like, thank you for sharing the story. Because like brother. I said, not many people will want to do this, but I think you're in a position of major influence and you're only going to keep growing. Yeah. So for like the next gen to know that someone like you exists and they may have similar battles they're facing, oh, happy did this. Happy got through it. Like I can follow in his footsteps to get through it and just be different. Absolutely. You know, and push forward. So much love to you, my brother. Of you course, are man. a brown baller, man. Hope we're going to stay in contact. Keep doing much more in the future. It's been my favorite episode so far, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for more. I'm excited to see you build and grow. And again, just thank you for having us out here. Thank you for having me, brother.